So, did you accept the gift? Are you rejoicing? Are you filled with joy? The sweet simplicity. You've been hearing about the love of the Lord Jesus and his sufferings. It would really be a tragedy for you to leave this gospel meeting tonight hearing about one who loves you, one who suffered, and one who wants to be your savior and would be tonight, if you would receive him, you to reject him. How many times have you heard about him? I'm thinking just now, just before I left the house tonight, I got a text and uh, a young, from across the Atlantic Ocean, a young professional Palestinian Muslim man, father, heard the gospel for the first time this day. And what he asked after the gospel meeting today was, he listened to it all, he said, what I don't understand is if Jesus is God's son, why did he send him to die? First time he heard it. How many times have you heard it? But you know, that is the wonder of a Christian's heart. It will be the wonder of our hearts for all eternity. Why? Why did he send him to planet Earth? to die for the likes of a sinner like me. He heard it for the first time today. How many times have you heard it? Have you wondered why? Well, just later this afternoon, I got another message from a friend out in Manitoba. And I knew since Friday that his dad was battling COVID. And they were going to move him into the ICU and they were going to flip him on his stomach and they were going to, but he was getting worse. My friend said, please pray for him. My dad's not saved, but he died today. And he said, what breaks our hearts is we have no hope. You know, this is all very real. We're talking about, you are hearing about the prospect, heaven or hell. Every single one in this room and on Zoom, without exception, will be in either place 100 years from tonight. 21, 21. Will you be in heaven? Answer that question. It's not just, I just don't put up a little fancy sign for you to say, Peter's got another sign. He's a little simple. Does he think we're all dumb that he uses a sign like this? If you don't hear anything else I say tonight, can you answer this question? Where are you going to be 100 years from now, this November? I know exactly where I will be. I don't have my fingers crossed. Because of the Lord Jesus, I will be in heaven. Can you say I am 100% sure? If we were back in the olden days when we used to talk to people at the door and shake hands and nod our heads, would you be able to grab my hand or bump my elbow and say, I'll be in heaven? Like, Lord willing, I'm flying home tomorrow. I may never be back to Newfoundland. Will I meet you in heaven? Will I look over here, over there? Will you be there? Will you? Now let's read in John's Gospel, 
chapter 14. Very familiar verses. Verse 1. Let not, these are the words of Jesus, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, me. I came down from heaven, the Savior, believe in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, he's talking to his disciples, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Do you remember the Lord Jesus said to the thief on the cross who cried to him in the last minutes of his life, Remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And what did Jesus say to that person? He wasn't baptized. He hadn't lived a good life. May never have been to a church or a synagogue in his entire life. And there he is, a criminal on the cross. And he caught, looks to Jesus. That's what you need to do tonight. Just one look of faith. He looked to Jesus that day, and Jesus said, Today you will be where? With me. You'll be with me. That's where I want to be. And that's where I'm going to be, with the Lord Jesus. Today you will be with me. And that's what he's telling the disciples here, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now flip to the last book of your Bible, Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and uh, the adults can debate whether this is in New Jerusalem or heaven. Whatever it is, we're going to read about it. of this, we can be sure. The Father's house, heaven, will not be any less than all the best of other, that other places may be. But look at verse 4 of Revelation 21. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And look at the next chapter, 22, verse 3, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. There shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither Light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. They shall reign forever and ever. Sound like a place you'd like to go to? But you're not sure, are you? Say, I'm hoping. I plan to. That's like, Peter, you, you wouldn't, think I'm so foolish as to say I don't want to be in such a place. Any right-thinking person wants to be in a place where there is no pain, where there is no suffering, where there are no tears. Any right-thinking person, that's where they would envision their, they want, that's what they want for their future. But will you be there? Forget about everybody else in this room. Will you be in heaven in 2121? The destination, you've been hearing about it. There is a re, the prospect. There are two destinies. There is a place called heaven. I couldn't begin to describe it to you. But it's presented as a magnificent kingdom. It's a real place. It's not restricted by the boundaries of space and, and time. Heaven. There are places in the Bible where you read of it as a, a country. Vast country. Another place, a city. That just speaks of all like where people dwell. Inhabitants. 
And in another place, it's spoken of as a kingdom. Oh, the, there'll be no underhandedness in that kingdom. Orderliness. The fair and just society that people dream about, that's what will mark that kingdom. In another place, it's called paradise. Well, that's just another word for beauty. Beauty. But don't you love the expression that Jesus used in John 14? My father's house. You say, no, I actually don't, Peter. I don't love that expression. I don't have good memories of my father. No, I know that. I've worked with people. They have horrific memories that I don't have of a father that abused them. Father that abused them physically. Fathers abu abused them sexually. And so they don't see any niceness about that expression, a father's house. And I've told some of those people, everything you ever wanted in an earthly father and failed to get, your heavenly father, if you trust Christ, will be everything you could have imagined that the best of earthly fathers would bring and infinitely more. Your heavenly father, oh, the father's house. It speaks of warmth. It speaks of acceptance. My father's house where I can just relax. I'm accepted here in my father's house. It is a place of love, protection, security. You know, some people don't get excited about heaven. They say it's okay when you're 80 or beyond. But I'm only a young person. I'm only, a, I'm only 11. And I don't get excited about heaven. Because I just envision rows and rows and rows and rows of people. And they're all singing. Hour after hour after hour. Like a senior citizen's home. An institution, and they're rocking and their rockers are filled with old people. Oh, you've got the wrong idea about heaven. Heaven is not like that at all. And it's not like a palace either. I've never been to Buckingham Palace. But if I ever get there, I want to see if there's an echo off the cold, barren walls. Hello? 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 It's not a, heaven's not a cold, gold palace, not a sterile clinical institution. No, heaven, it's a real place. We've been reading about it. My father's house. I can tell you what's not there better than I can tell you what is there. There's no sin. There is no suffering. There's I went up the alphabet bet one day. There's no anger. There's, there are no aches, no bruises, no brokenness, no cancer, no cemeteries, no darkness, no disease, no death, E. No evil, no emptiness, F. No friction, no fighting, no factions, G. No grief. H, no heartaches, dear child of God. No heartbreaks, dear mother. Heaven. I, illness, no illness. J, no jars or jolts, you know, how your phone rings. Your world is turned upside down. None of that in heaven. I can tell you more what's not there. It's a place of light and warmth. I'm not, just before I go on, are you going to be there? You know what the other option is. A place of eternal suffering. Is it possible that one person listening on Zoom or one person in this room is going to miss heaven. What was I saying? 
There's no, there's no sin or suffering, but it, it, I'll tell you, there's light, there's warmth, there's acceptance, there's tranquility, there's peace, there's harmony, there's fellowship, there's intimacy, there's rest. No, it's not like it's like sometimes heaven seems like almost like an artificial place. You almost think it's like ghosts, like wispy ghosts going around like this in circles. And like, what is heaven? No, heaven. Look at heaven. Heaven, I said, it's, it's not a celestial nursing home. Like, I, I love hymn sings, but after an hour, my, I'm croaking and I say, let's move on to the lunch. Like, I can't, you know, it's not an eternal hymn sing. It's actually going to be a very exciting place. You say exciting? Yeah. Look at it. You look around this world. Mr. Gill and I were over at a building down at the university the other day, and a man stopped and talked to us. And he's all excited. He he's specialized. He took his post up. He's a a fruit fly geneticist. Didn't know there were such people. And he's all excited about fruit fruit flies. Who made the who made all this? Holds a, an intellectual person like him spellbound all his life. Just looking at a tiny little fly, and then Mr. Dirksen chirps up and he said, Brother so and so up in Ontario, he's a mosquito specialist. That's what he studied. And then there are adventurers and they they explore Mount Everest. Some even go out to Cape Spear and admire the beauty. And they're just taking shots all the time, trying to get a better wave crashing and higher spray. It's beautiful, isn't it? Who made it? And this is a world that's broken by sin, and it's still beautiful. Who, did you ever see those birds with their, their big beaks and, they, and, and so colorful? Did you ever watch a monkey swinging from this branch? I always thought was one pet. I always thought it'd be nice to have a monkey, but they say they're dirty things to have around the house. But did you ever see those monkeys? Who made all that? God, the creator God. And if that's what a broken world is like, holds people spellbound at its wonders. Whatever will be, whatever will heaven be like? The same God. They won't be boring. We will all be sitting around and lazy boys. Ah, but just a second. I was going to say something excited for the Christians, but then I just thought there may be somebody here and you won't be there. The destination won't be yours. The qualifications you must be saved. You must have your name written in the Lamb's book of life. You need a passport to go to another country. We sing my passport to the realms of bliss is Jesus died for me. That's the qualification. Doesn't, you don't have to say I go to the gospel hall. This Jesus died for me. Welcome. Welcome. Who's going to be up there? People of all ages. We'll all be adoring Christ. That's really, I told you what's not there, and I tried to tell you what is there. But you know what really makes heaven heaven? We're going to see the one who suffered that you've been hearing about. The Lord Jesus, I haven't got a, a clue what I'm, my first response is going to be. I wonder sometimes, will I just go up and just want to give him a hug? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me, shedding your blood. Or will I fall on my face? Or will I dance? I, I don't dance. My wife 
thinks I'm pretty awkward athletically and in a lot of other ways too. And so I, I can't imagine myself dancing, but oh, there'll be tremendous joy to see him. The congregation, there'll be moms and dads up there, but a daughter might be missing or a son will be missing. There'll be sons, and I've already been talking about a family out in Manitoba, and they're afraid. They'll be there, and they look around. No, just what we thought. Dad didn't make it. There'll be husbands up there without wives, and wives up there without husbands. But the question I want as we close, to ask you as we close the meeting, Will you be there? Will you be there? I'm going to worship him forever. The Bible tells us we're going to serve him forever. We're going to be administrators in the kingdom of God. We've got a full agenda, and we're going to have bodies that are ch changed and new. Some of these folks are a little weary and tired and got aches and pains find it hard to negotiate the stairs and everything else. New body, filled with energy of youth and to serve him forever and ever. But will you be there? Will you? You need to make your reservation now. No one gets to heaven without a reservation made in advance. This is the advance. This is a night you make your reservation. This is a night you turn to Christ for salvation. This is a night by faith you embrace him as your savior. This is a night you get your name entered in heaven's guest registry. The Lamb's book of life. Trust Christ. As we close the meeting, embrace him as your savior. Thank him for dying on the cross for your sins. And you'll be able to say, yes, I'll be gone, but you can contact Mr. Dirks and say, Mr. Dirksen, I know now I will be in heaven 21, 21. Let's pray. Our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray for those that we've been speaking to over the last couple of weeks. Some are in this room, others are in line. Many of us look forward to a wonderful future, an indescribable future, a future that cannot be something that we can't comprehend our minds but we understand the word of god and to be with christ which is very far better than anything we've ever experienced heretofore father we pray for those who are not ready you're not saved they're in their sins we pray for them, Father. Speak to their hearts. Save their precious souls. We pray in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.